Hey guys, give me one second. All right, I think I have everything in the image. So, gosh, for some reason it looks like it's, I don't know, I was playing around with my camera mount. So, things look like they're a little out of place. But anyway, hi guys. <laughs> Just give it a minute to see if anyone will be joining me for my Facebook, my weekly Facebook Live. And um, I will start in a couple minutes, even a couple seconds actually, even if nobody shows up. If you are watching this live, thank you for joining me. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Donna Singleton and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I, um, my business name is Donna's Creative Space, which is the name of my Facebook page. My blog is donnascreativespace.com. And um, my, like I said, my Facebook page, my YouTube channel is Donna's Creative Space also. So now what I'm doing today is I am working with the Color and Contour stamp set and the coordinating dies that go with it. These coordinating dies are called the scalloped contours dies. And if you just, even if you're not thrilled with the stamp set, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, it's absolutely gorgeous. These, this um, die set is fabulous. It has, there's one missing from here because I have it over here because I'm going to use it. But there's this scallop. You can cut a scallop into your cards. So I am going to also show you, um, this is my second half of the month card class. I have used the same stamp set. So I will show you that in a couple of seconds. But um, for right now, like I said, this color and contours, you can buy them together and save 10% by buying them in a bundle. That is how uh, most of, all of the bundles that Stampin' Up! sells. Whether it's a stamp and a punch or a stamp and the dies, um, you get, a, you get a, a discount, 10% discount when you buy them together. So anyway, I'm using this, but I'm also going to show you a quick sneak peek at my card class to go. We're making these two cards today. I'm going to make these two for you, show you how I made them. But my card class to go are these four cards. And these four cards you will get if you shop with me between, um, well, it's till May 31st. So what we have today is the 28th, May 28th. So you have till May 31st. So that's four days to shop with me. You just need to spend $35 and you will get... Um, a kit of these cards to make at home. It's a to-go class and you'll get written instructions and there is going to be a um, a video, private video. I'll send, I'll put the link on the written instructions and you can go and watch me how I created these four. So it's like a private class at home. That's why I call them my to-go class. And you're going to get supplies to make two of each of these four cards. Now, I will do all the die cutting for you except for the ones that you have to stamp first like these three flowers and this flower here that you have to stamp first so you'll want to grab these um, dies because you'll use that flower die let me open this up so there's no glare so you'll use this flower die to cut this image out and you'll use this die to cut these three out all right, so you want to have, you could fussy cut if you if you don't want to get the dies, but really these dies are, I think these dies are great. They're becoming my, I would say my second favorite because I still like the Stitch So Sweetly dies. Those are my longtime favorite. So you'll get, you'll get the ribbon, the twine. I'll cut out all these shapes that you need. 
all the design series paper, all the cardstock, and you'll get the supplies to make two each. And you'll just need the stamp set and the dies if you don't want to fussy cut, the, these three flowers and that, and um, you'll need your ink. So you can make them, you know, buy the supplies that I used and make them exactly like mine, or you can go ahead and get my kits and put whatever you want and just use, put whatever you want on the cards. All right, so those are the, I will show this again at the end of the class, at the end of today's session, just in case um, you were joining late. But these are the two cards that gonna, we're gonna work on today. And what I did is I'm sort of casing the catalog. And what we mean, Stampin' Up! uses the word case a lot, and it's C-A-S-E, which um, it's like a theme. Copy and share everything. So C-A-S-E, I am casing the catalog today. I'm going to make this one for you. And I kind of did this one, but not not like theirs. I changed it around a little. And I, and I did, I changed this around a little bit, and then I added to this one a little bit. Not much. But it's really, this both um, this and this I used a masking technique but this one I really had fun doing and um, I hope you try it and you can use whatever colors you like I am using exactly what they used on this so this stamp set is on page 98 if you are looking in your catalog and if you don't have a catalog and you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator if you're new and you want to place an order, just go to donnasingleton.stampinup.net and place your order. I'll see it, and you can send me a quick email saying, send me a catalog. And because I would be happy, and then you will, once you're a customer of mine, I give you, I buy a catalog for you every time one comes out, which we will be having another one coming up out soon, the, the holiday catalog. It's going to be called the the July to December mini catalog. They don't call it a holiday catalog anymore. But it will be coming out um, instead of July 1st. It's going to be going live to customers August 1st. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you about, and there's a few more things. So one of the things I want to tell you about is ending in four days. Now, this we have a join special going on, which is absolutely wonderful. And if you just go to my website, donnasingleton.stampinup.net, you could click on the join button and learn more about it and, um, and, and join right there. I would love to have you on my Sage Stamper team. And normally you can get um, $125 in product, your choice of product, not Stampin' Up's choice, your choice, and only pay $125 for it plus tax. The shipping's free. However, until May 31st, so four days, you can get 155. Let me get my little pointer out and get this closer. So this is our join special for the month of May. $155 worth of stuff, and you only pay $99. This is U.S. If you're in Canada, you can pick out $206 and pay $135. But most of you that have watched me that I know of are all in the U.S. So you can go to donnasingleton.stampnup.net and click on the join button. I would love to have you on my Sage Stampers team and um, pick out, you'll get to pick out $155 worth of stuff, worth all product. You choose. Stampin' Up! doesn't choose. They'll send you they'll send you a package of catalogs. They'll send you order forms. They'll, they'll send you a lot of business supplies in case you want to do it as a business. But you don't have to do it as a business. You can just do this to just get a discount every time you place an order. You'll get a minimum discount of 20% for as long as you stay on as a demonstrator. So if you have any questions, you can reach me at DonnaSingleton33 at yahoo.com. And if you go to my blog, DonnasCreativeSpace.com, there's a link in the top menu to reach me, to, to send me a, um, a text, an email, I should say. But it's, it's really one of the greatest deals because normally when they do have a special going on, you, they, they give you a certain product. Maybe they let you pick out a stamp set. Maybe they let you, you know, get a... Uh, a few ink pads, but this is a really good one because you get to pick out the product. So you're you're really getting $56 worth of free product.
product. $155 you're spending. No, I mean, I'm sorry, you're picking out $155, but you're only spending $99. So that's $56 free. So if you have a big wish list, this is the time to do it. $99, you pick out $155. All right, so that's my first spiel. My next spiel is our Connect and Craft, Connect Craft and Collect. If you have a large order, if you have a couple of friends that you want to get together and put in a large order, please let me know. You once you spend 200 when this is the chart that is going on right now until June 14th. Normally, we have a chart in the back of the magazine in back of the catalog that gives our percentages, but for until July, June 14th, if you spend 250 you and your friends put together as a hostess, you'll get 10% stamp and rewards, which is normal, but they're also going to give you an additional 75, um, excuse me, $25 in rewards. So if you put an order in for 250, 10% would be $25. Another $25 is $50 in free product that you get to pick out. And one of the items is, oh, let me grab it. I didn't pull it out. Um, where is it? Oh, I found it. So as a host, as a host, this is one of the pr products you can buy. And this is $18, but look at this. This is 48 sheets, double-sided sheets of paper. Now look at this. It's absolute it's it's awesome. Look how bit look how much you get. So I mine are all mixed up, but one side is black and white prints and the other side is multiple colors. All right, so this is an awesome choice, and only hosts can get it. Pretty good, right? Look at all these. I'm trying to. It's it's big. It's so it's so big that I'm having a hard time handling it. But isn't that great? And I believe you get four. One, two, three. Yeah, so you get four. I'll show you. So the four pages of each design. This side. It's two sided. So you get this side, and then this side. Right. So it's really a great, so that's that's only available to hosts. And we also have a couple of stamp sets that are only available to hosts, for hosts. So if you have a big list, now's the time to put your order in, get a friend, and maybe combine a couple orders and get that extra $25 now until June 14th. And don't forget, if you have a big wish list, you can also do the join that I was just telling you about. And get to pick out $155 worth of stuff for only $99. All right. That is the business portion that I wanted to get out of the hand. Out of, um, get out of hand? No. Get over with? Oh, I don't know what the, what, what I'm, what the saying is, what I want. I told you about the card class to go, and I will show that again at the end of this, but I want to get started on these cards because I had, I, this was fun to make these. This was a little bit challenging because I was trying to change the look of it from the one in the catalog. I love doing this one. And if you, I think that part of my card class to go, um, th these are the these other four cards. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add one of these. I'll show you what it looks like. It's the largest scalloped die cut. I think I'm going to add one of these to your kit. Right, so you'll get enough to make two of these other four designs. And I'll throw in one of these. All right, I just thought of that just now because I want you to try this technique that I'm going to show you because I think it's really cool. All right, and I will show you the cards and explain that again at the end of the, um, at the, end of the class. This little virtual mini make, I don't know what you would call this, just a Facebook Live. All right, so I have my paper here. I'm using, this is photopolymer. When I use photopolymer, I like to put some sort of foam underneath. You could use our stamp and pierce mat, but I like this foam that I got at Michael's because um, I can I can fold over a piece of our grid paper and it, and it fits great on there. What I am going to do though is I'm going to put a little bit of tape because I don't want it rocking around. So I'll put it down on my surface and then maybe another little piece to keep this piece of paper in in place. All right. This helps me keep in the image area of where we're working. All right. So we'll make, let's see. Um, I think I want to make this card first 
because this one kind of makes a mess of my grid paper and I don't want it to get confused with this. So I'm going to, I've done a little bit of the work ahead of time just so that it was easier to um, show you, but I'll do all the stamping and everything right now. So let me pull this out. So I'm going to use this scallop um, die from the set. Okay. And you're going to start with a base. Uh, let's see, I'm going to move my stuff over. You're going to start with a base that is five and a half wide by eight and a half long, right? That's our normal card base. But you're going to score it at two and an eighth from either end, all right? So, and then these would fold in, but you're going to see what we did with this, all right? So two and an eighth, two and an eighth from either end, all right? Then I will show you what I did, but I've already die cut mine. You're going to take, I'm using some washi tape and I'm using a little ruler of mine. I like this little plastic ruler. It's one of my quilting rulers. I'm lining up that score line onto my grid paper. I'm not sure if you can see this. I think I will, let's see, I think I'll see if I can zoom in. Alright, I, but I, I, I always forget to zoom out. So if you're watching <laughs> and you see that I move on to the next step and I haven't zoomed out, please um, send a comment over to me. All right, let me see. I think I'm too far in now. Let's see. Let's see if that's better because I just have to wait for my computer to catch up and see if that is better. And like I said, if you're watching live, I'll keep looking over at my computer and see if somebody comments because I have been known to keep going. I think that's good, right? I think that's good. All right. So I've, I've put the, um, my score line, that's two and an eighth in, I've put it along this solid line on my grid paper just to help me line things up. And then I'm putting my ruler because it's very hard to see that score line on the white paper. And you probably can't see it unless I tilt the paper at an angle. So then I put my ruler or any straight edge along that. I want to cut one, eight, one inch away from the fold line. It, it's, not a, it's not a magic number. It's just the number I came up with. I don't know what they did here. It kind of looks like it might be um, an inch away, but I'm not sure. So I just did it my way. Oops, I moved my ruler. So let me get lined up again and put my ruler down and then I'm going to put this down with the cutting portion down and I think this plastic ruler just helps me keep it in line and then I'm going to take some um, washi tape and I'm not going to cut this because I've already cut one for you so I'm going to hold that in place again put this right up against it kind of make it hang over evenly on either side right just like that. And then I can take this to my die cutting machine. Okay. Now I've already, and then you're going to do both sides like this. So I'm going to zoom out again to back to normal. Yay. I remembered. <laughs> Usually I end up doing the video and people are looking, just looking at my knuckles. All right. So I'll put this aside. You got that, do it this side. And then you just turn the paper around after you run that through the die cutter. You do this side, and this is what you end up with. All right. See if I put this right down on there. That's how you would end up with this cut here, and then you're going to do the other side. All right. So that's what we end up with. And like I said, I wanted to do it ahead of time just to get that out of the way because you guys don't really need to see me. If, the, if I could fit that through the mini machine, I would do it. But this way I don't have to pull out my big one into this, try to fit it into this image. All right. So next we want to stamp some flowers on here. So I am going to just quickly, I'm off to the side. You can't see it, but I had my stamping scrub, so I spritzed one side. And I'm going to stamp my flowers on the other side. But what I want is a, a couple of pieces of... I just want something like to um, block. Hang on, I'm grabbing a piece. I want just a piece of, not a piece of cardstock. I want a piece of 
copier paper. The thinner, the better. All right, and, and because you don't want too much of a ridge, and I'm going to put, like, again, I'm going to line up my um, line on this just because it's very, it's really hard for even me to see it. And I can just imagine you guys. So I'm going to put this piece of paper across here, and it's only so that I don't stamp over the fold. If you don't care if your flowers go on the back of your fold, you can go ahead and um, eliminate this step. You don't have to put paper down. I just didn't want the, I don't want the edge of the flowers on the back. So now I'm going to ink up my, with, I'm using pale papaya. I'm going to hold this down and I'm just going to stamp. And I'm going to put a little more pressure nearer to the edge of that copier paper so I don't get this a ridge. And I'm just going to stamp some on and some off. Again, I'm going to put a little more pressure near the where that paper is just so I don't have a um, ridge. And there. All right. Then I'll turn it around and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Like I said, just use copier paper because if you use cardstock, it will be too thick. And you'll definitely get this like a ridge, like a white space. It's not really, ooh, I have too much. Hang on, let me get a tissue. My pale papaya ink pad is, is pretty juicy, so I don't want to have too much on here and get it all over my card. So again, I'm just going to put it down, put a little bit more pressure near the edge of that. And then over here, put one going that way. And then one going this way, right? And that's that. So I can put that. I'm going to wash that stamp because I'll have it ready for the next card because we are using it later. All right. So that's it for that. But while we're here, we're going to do some stamping. So now I've given you the this, this measurements for that. So for this piece here, this is one and seven eighths by three and a quarter. And I am going to take... Um, where did I put my memento ink? It's under here somewhere. Oh my goodness. There it is. I found it. All right. So I'm going to take the memento ink. So I, I, I say I cleaned this off so that I won't forget to do it when we go to do this card. All right. All right. So I'm going to, oh, look, I got a fingerprint. Well, I'm going to just do the other side and, uh oh, oh my goodness. Look what's happening to me. All right. That's because I'm, I'm like, I've really got myself squished here. I don't need my trimmer, so let me get that out of the way. So I have some room. All right. All right, so now I'm going to ink up this stamp. This is this floral right here that is so pretty. And I'm going to ink that up. And I'm going to, you can do it this way and go around your ink pad, or um, you can go upside down like this. Oh, but see, I make a mess. So if I can do it, see, I got it on my hand. I think I have a little baby wipe next to me. All right, so I'm going to ink this up, and then I'm going to put it right on this piece, kind of at an angle. I know what it is, is I'm trying to squish into this, um, this foam, this foam pad here, so I don't, my ink is off the edge and tipping and everything. All right. How do we do? Good. All right. That is done. So let me wipe my hand. Put a little bit more ink on it. All right. So I'm going to put that aside. Let's see what else. Oh, we have to stamp some more, some, some sentiments. I've got two strips. Let's see. I'll give you the other measurements while we're here. We have the medium size. I cut out the medium size. I, I say medium because it's right smack in the middle. All right. So we're using, we're going to use the largest on this one. Okay. I'll show you right now. This is the largest. Then we're going to use this meat, this middle, this, uh, it's three in and it's three out. It's one, two, three. It's the third, number three. Let's say number three. That'll be easiest for you to see. All right. 
that card for later. Um, let's see. Okay. So I need two pieces of Whisper White, and we're going to stamp the sentiment. What I did was I did Here For You Now and In Better Days Ahead. I had stamped it on this designer series paper, but it just doesn't come out dark, dark enough. So I decided to go ahead and um, just make it nice and dark on the white paper. Just stamp so much. It's just so much smoother. All right. So we want, on the smaller one, we want to stamp here, here for you now. And um, this was five eighths by two and a quarter. That's what this piece was. Okay. And the other piece is five eighths, five eighths wide by two and three quarters is long. All right, that's this piece here. I'm trying to get it as straight as possible. It's kind of hard when you're stamping sort of at an angle. All right, so that is all this. Oh no, we have one more thing to stamp. I almost forgot. We're going to color, we're using um, in this set they have, this is like a what they call a two stamp process. So you have the stamp, the, the image, and then you have the blotchies that go inside. Image and the, I call it blotchy. The fill-in, the image and the blotchy fill-in, all right? Now these fill-ins aren't gonna be exactly, they don't fit exactly. It's not meant to be exact. It's meant, and I think it's easier this way too. When things don't have to line up perfectly, it's so much easier to do it. So they're not going to line up perfectly. You just want to get it in the air, somewhat in that area. I kind of aim for that top little bud and the bottom flower. But like I said, it doesn't fill up the whole flower. It's just meant to throw some color behind it. See? It just, it's just, 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 just like that. Just add a little bit of color. Okay, now let me close this. We're all done with that. All right, then I'm going to save my piece of paper when we do the other inking. All right, so this piece is going to go onto this. And the reason I picked this to do today, because I do a Facebook Live Every Friday I've been doing this for a while now. And, um, goodness, I think that um, the reason I picked this is because it matches my card class to go that you can still get. So I thought, well, why not do something that uses that? Because if someone watching decides they want to buy the set, I want you to be able to um, get get my other cards for free. I mean, that's eight cards. You just have to spend $35. And this set, let me see what this, this kit, I mean, this bundle, the contour and color bundle is $50.25. Now, when you buy from me, you get the card class for free if you spend $35. If you spend 50 or more, you get a set of embellishments, a free set of embellishments. I'm not sure what you'll get. If I have enough, you may get this one. No, I'm trying to think. What did I use? Yeah, I think that um, you'll get a set of embellishments. That's how I'll leave it because I'm not sure how much I have, but I think it's going to be this one because, I mean, these aren't the cards I made, but this this is the card class here, and I use that here, here. Those I use some pastel pearls, and I use black dots. So you'll get one of those, either pastel pearls, black dots, or... Or um, you'll get the uh, genial gems, right, which are in pale papaya and soft succulent. So I'm not sure which you'll get. Probably, probably these, because you'll use them on two cards. So that's if you get, if you shop with me, you'll get the free card kits. All right. Now, now next I have design series paper that's five and a quarter by three and a quarter, and this is going to go on the inside. And you could cut it all the way to four if you want to, but most of it's going to get hidden out of the, under this bottom flap. And I just want to look and see which one. I guess it really doesn't matter which I use. I'll keep this one on the bottom. 
and I'm going to put this one I'm going to put this one close to the top fold right so that there's even white space all the way around because I've cut it that three and a quarters is going to not let not show the white space right but we don't have to waste it down here so you can it's just a little extra why, why cover it right so that would be the next thing to do is to close this and do it on the edges and since I want each scallop to stay down I just kind of put a little bit on each scallop and I close that up and there's the bottom of our card I just love this and then this here is going to go on the inside and I made it narrow enough just enough to fit that sentiment on and you want to put it somewhere underneath this banner not banner but the flip the flap right just like that because we don't want to see that until we open the card and then this piece geez we're almost done with this I'm just gonna put so this piece here what you can do is if you're doing this this is what I like to do I like to put it where I, I'm planning on place it upside down where I'm planning on putting it and then put my adhesive you could use dimensionals I'm I'm doing this flat and I only do adhesive in the portion that I know is going to be hidden because you don't want to close your you don't want to close up your card by sticking the bottom I got to put it towards me a little bit just like that and then this I'm going to put up on dimensionals I know I had them out here they are oh I forgot to tell you in case you were wondering this designer series paper that is this 2000 and, uh, 2021 2023 these are the in colors it's such pretty paper you get I love these colors I really really love these you get 40 sheets so you get um, eight sheets of the five of each five color and the eight sheets come with um, two different four different designs so I've already used a little bit of this diamond shape but I'll show you you get for the this design and for the that design and then you'll get I've already used a couple sheets four of this design and four of that design in all the colors so you get eight sheets of each color and these colors are gorgeous I love I love 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 this evening evergreen this is going to be a really pretty color to use um, for the holidays evening is that evening evergreen yeah I think that's what the name is gosh they just came out and I'm trying to learn all the colors I mean I mem mem excuse me memorize them but all right so that's that we did that so now oh that's where I stopped I lost my train of thought all right so this is that little five eighths of an inch strip that I stamped on and this is just going to go across the book. Oh, I forgot before I put that down. I'm using, and I should have done this before, but I'm using the um, light soft succulent stamp and blend just to put a little color on these leaves. Completely forgot. Just as I was wanting to put it down, I said something's missing. So, and these leaves are kind of abstract. So just put a little color. I should have, I would normally, I would do this. Um, I think I'll just put a little skinny line down the side of that. Normally I would do that before I paste it onto my card, but I forgot. All right, and then this is going to go right over it, just like this, just over the center. And then the last thing I did was I used those Genial Gems, and I was going to use the Pale Papaya, right, this color, because that's what matches the ink but I thought you know why don't I use the green ones because um, I don't know if these are too big not I thought they might be too big to pick up but I'm using the larger these green ones this is the soft succulent I just thought when I decided to use these instead of the come on make sure I have my um, this is a little bit of putty on the end of this there didn't have enough I didn't have enough putty out uh, maybe I'll put one over here. I usually like to do things in odd numbers, but I did want to cover um, all those. All right, and then I was then I thought, well, I'll use the the pale papaya ones on the flo flower. And then I thought, no, I don't want to do that either. I think the green, the soft succulent, just add. I'm gonna put it up here this time. I like to put them wherever um, 
make sure I get my enough. You just squeeze these and this and more. Oh, here it comes. It's like silly putty. Remember silly putty from when we were kids? All right, and I'm going to put one down here. Oh, that's a big one. Wait a sec. I don't want to use a big one. I'm using little ones for this. That one. And then, hmm, I guess I'll put this over there. And that is our first card. So it's a little different than the book. I'll bring back the book. Well, quite a bit different than the book. But like I said, I was just, I was just casing the book, copy and sharing. All right, copy and share everything. So they put in. Um, I wanted to use the different two different flowers in this stamp set. They use this flower with the fill in, and we're going to use that on the other card. So I wanted to do something different with this card. So and I don't know whether this is sealed down or flips open or not. You can't tell by the book, but that's what I just decided to do. Is you can. Um, I just thought it made a little bit of interest in a little bit of it, like a fun fold. All right, so that was the first card. So I'll put that aside. And now we're going to do this one. And mine pretty much looks like that one. Let me pull it out again. So there's mine. What I added was these little flowers that we get. All right, so I'm going to show you how to make this one next. And I really think that the, the um, having the black over the colors really really I don't know it just sets it off so let me show you what we need I'm gonna pull back out that piece of um, some, I have a few sheets of this of copy paper like the one we just used and I'm using a Highland Heather card base right this is four and a quarter by 11 right so this is the uh, a tall one the other ones you can well the, you can it's tall you can open it this way you can you know put it this way but um, as opposed to a card that opens like this like this is short and fat you can go this way or that way and this is the skinnier version all right so I'm using that card base and I told you before I I cut the largest this largest shape from the dies. All right, I just want to put this back on here and I lost my flower. There it is. I just want to make sure I put this back on here because I don't want to lose it. So we're using the largest shape. And if you get my card class to go, I will, I'm going to cut one of these for you. And um, this way you can try this, this um, technique. So, gosh, I'm putting things in the wrong. So I already cut this. So let me put this away. All right. Okay, so I have... Let me get my little bin out. I've got a whole other bin of stuff for this card. All right, I already had one of those. I cut two just in case. And I am using a Blushing Bride. Let me get this over. I'm using Blushing Bride. I'm using my Mint Macaron. I'm using Highland Heather and Pacific Point. You can use any colors you want for this. All right. Um, I got everything. There wasn't. There's not much to this. Now I already did another one. I want to show you what it looked like without the the stamping on it. And um, it's it's really a fun technique. So, and I used the colors that they did in the catalog and I'll show you how I did it leave that off to the side and we can put that off to the side also and I'm using our blender brushes all right now I'm using you get three in a pack I had two packs so I'm using four different colors and if I was just um, these wash out the ink can wash out so when I'm done here today I'll go wash them and let them air dry and they'll be fine for the next time. They won't, the color won't bleed as long as you wash them. They might, some of the colors might stain it, but they're fine. They come in a pack like this. Um, you get three in a pack. Now, right now they're back ordered, all right? They are only $12 for three of these blending brushes. It is number 153611. Like I said, it's back ordered. They're due back into the manufacturing plant 
um, June 14th. They have, and, and what I want to say is, if something says it's back ordered and you want it, you can still add it to your cart and pay for it. It will be shipped, your, the rest of your order will come in, and this, whatever's back ordered, will be shipped when they come in. Now, this says it's back ordered, right? And when I go online as a demonstrator, I can see the inventory status, and the, it says it has two, two, a little over 280 on back order. But guess what? They are expecting 14,000 of these to come in in June. All right, so if you want the blending brushes and or anything that says back ordered the strawberry remember the strawberry punch that was on back order it's finally but it came back in then it went back out again some people got it some people didn't but that's back in but these june 14th is the date they've given us that could change but get them in your cart let them go through your order and when stampin up gets them in it'll, they'll just ship these separately and they don't they, you, get, you just pay the one shipping fee. So I have four stamps, four of them out because I wanted to, I don't want to have to wash them in between. All right. So I'm going to start with the Highland Heather. So I want to move these inks out of the way. And gosh, this is going to be, I, I'm sorry, but this is going to be a little bit longer Facebook Live. I think because I did so much business talking at the beginning of this. All right, so I'm going to open Highland Heather. One of these things with this is when you're using these brushes and you first get ink on them and you put it down, you're going to get that kind of rounded shape, all right? Now, what we want for this is we want to go back and forth with it, and we try not to get that rounded shape. However, when I did this one, I did pretty well because it, it takes a little bit to get used to using the brushes, but this one, I did get a little bit of rounded all right, you can see it's a little rounded, but that didn't matter. It still looks fine. Nobody sees it. You probably didn't notice it until I pointed it out. This one's a little better. So I'll show you how I do it. So I take, and this is just the scrap paper from um, the last card I used. It's just the, just, just um, copy of paper. So I'm going to start uh, over here, like on this, and then go on this. And I, I'm going all the way over. That whole area, I masked off maybe about an inch or so. You can, it doesn't matter what, but a lot of times you can do this, circular motions, but you can get like a circular look. I want more of a sweep look. So either you brush it off here or there, but get a little bit of that ink off. You can always go back and add more, but you can't take it away. So once you put the ink on, and you think it's, and it might not look that dark. Oops. It might not look that dark until you lift it up. Oops. And then I'll show you. Isn't that cool? Look at that. All right. So now I'm going to switch. I'm going to close that for now just so I don't use it by accident. And I'll put that with that. And I need the, the next color is the Blushing Bride. All right, so I have a one just I'm using just for blushing bride. I'm gonna switch out my paper and I'm gonna go down. And the the fun thing with this is the scallop. You can count the scallops and use that to so you don't have to measure. You can count how many you want to go down. So I'm gonna go down a couple more, just like that. And I'm gonna leave that. I'm not gonna cover that up because I'm gonna stay away from that area. All right, and you want to make sure you're keeping your paper in place and just go across like that and you can go up so I can go up towards the purple now not into it but just up to it just so my I want to have my color darker towards the uh, bottom and lighter towards the top just like that isn't that cool all right and I'm going to just turn this on the other side well I'll use the um I can use this one so I'm going to close that up. We are going to use these, the ink later. And now I'm going to use the mint macaron. All right. And same thing. Just like this. Same thing. And you can go all the way up to the pink. I just don't want to go into the pink. 
and see how I got a little bit of darker color there I'll just going to go in and and go over it a few times and that'll disappear and I think our flower will be right there anyway so that won't be too bad All right cool look at that I'll bring it up so you can see isn't that cool I just love this now for the last one I don't need a piece of paper let me close this like I said we are going to use this but I'm going to use this this is Pacific Point now this is really a darker color so I'm going to start off here a lot and I'm just going to go across like this up to the green but not into it do it again get the that first initial amount off and then go up you see how I can I can keep adding to it I just can't take away so be careful with it and I do want a little bit darker in the oh I did it's just did a swirl I didn't mean to so I'm just gonna kind of go over that spot there back and forth and it's fine all right so there we have it all right so now we put this these brushes aside and we want the spackle this little no no I'm sorry we don't want to do that yet we want the flower that we cleaned earlier all right we want this flower again and if you're out there watching live say hello Sorry, I just had to take a sip of my coffee. So I'm going to um, ink up this flower. And um, I want my... Where is my sentiment? Let me put my sentiment first, actually. So I'm going to ink up the sentiment. And this one says, You are absolutely amazing. And I'm going to put that right in the green area. Line it up with the bottom of the blushing bride area cool it doesn't that black look awesome on these colors all right and then this one I'm gonna put right here and I'm gonna hold it a sec because it takes a little bit to sink in and these might not be in the exact spot I did before but that's okay and this one there I just want to make sure I have enough room I'll put this one off to the edge a little I like to have the um, ink sink in. Oh, I just love it on these colors. I am going to try doing a bunch of... Now, see how we had that round thing there? I'm not worried about it because this is going to go right on top. I just love this um, blending technique. It's so cool. Can't wait to try some other colors. All right. And let me... Oh, you know what? While we're here... I forgot I did do one on the inside forgot to tell you you'll need a an inside piece an inside mat that's four four by five and a quarter and I'm just gonna put that and I don't want to wrap rock because I got some ink on the edge of my there yeah, so I'm gonna put that right down the corner and then we're done with the stamping it's funny this card once you get that blending done those colors which I think is a dramatic look um, it's really kind of cool. So I'm going to take the Highland Heather again because I'm using a Highland Heather base. I thought I'd do this flower here. I forgot. See, I put a little color behind it. I'm going to take the Highland Heather out and I'm going to start over here like we do. But this one I'm doing the swirl because this one happens to be a, more of a circular. Right? And now now is the spot spackle spackle is that what i want is that the word not spackle sprinkle splatter splatter is my word i don't know why spackle is something you put on the walls when you have a hole so splatter oh my goodness somebody's here i know there were there were people watching but they weren't saying hello hello cindy thank you for sharing and then i'm going to take this splatter image and just put it right across that flower and that will be at the inside of our card. And now for this, I'm going to take each of the colors and I'm going to put the splatter. You like it? I like this. 
I like it a lot. Have you been watching? I don't think you were here since the beginning, Cindy, but um, this is from the catalog. I'm casing the catalog. So I have to clean my stamp set, my stamp in between because we're changing colors. So I have, like I said, I have my cleaner off to the side. And so we're done with the Highland Heather. Now we're going to go back and take our Blushing Bride. And you can kind of see what I'm doing is I'm just taking the ink that we used in each of the blended areas and um, using the splatter. And if you know me, I love a good splatter. I have been using, I've kept my Magical Mermaid out because I love this little dotted pattern. It's kind of like a splatter. And now that this stamp set came out, now that this this splatter is here, I might be actually I might actually sell my Magical Mermaid. Put this back in the case because it is wood, and I I'm trying to not use my wood ones anymore. What next, next color is mint macaron, and I don't care that the the mint macaron's going into the blue. That's fine. I think I'll put the bigger splatters up higher though, just like that. I just popped on and well, oh, oh yeah, that's good. No worries, Cindy. There were a couple people watching. People come and go. I think they look. They see something they don't like, then they just leave, which is fine. My cards aren't everybody's taste. But anyway, so now we're going to do this last one. This is the Pacific Point again, and I'm just going to put the splatter there. I just think this is so cool. And um, I couldn't tell where did I put my catalog over here. I was trying to think. I do think... Yeah, they did do the splatter in the catalog. So I did follow that with them. And they used a different, they used it, they used the say, say, ugh, the say, sentiment that I used on the, the first card. But I like this because um, I could, I like, I think I have a lot of friends that are amazing. So I can always use these cards. All right, so let's pull out our base. And let's put inside this. This is getting close to running out. But I have another one handy just in case. So I'm going to put this on the inside. I love Highland. I'm, I'm a purple girl. I love purple. So that's my inside. Now this I'm going to put up on dimensionals. And if I didn't say it already, Cindy, thank you for sharing. That's so nice of you. So, I like to use this. All right. Oh, gosh. I love this card. I'm so happy I decided to case it. All right. So, the other thing I did was, which they didn't have, is I put these little flowers. These are called... Loose flower flourishes. All right, so they go, can go on with a glue dot. But what I thought they needed was um, a little something in the center. So I'll show you what I did. I actually waited till they were on the card. See the little black in the center? I used my basic black, the dark basic black alcohol marker. I just thought, I don't know, I just, maybe I'll do it on here, show you. And I'm using the ballpoint end. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. I might have zoomed in too much. I have to wait and see how it looks on my computer. But I wanted to show you what I did. And um, like I said, I did it when they were already um, glued on the, you know, the mini glue dots had them holding steady on the card. So hopefully it won't jump around on me. Um, oh, thank you for sharing, Margaret. And I just went straight up and down into the center of this, just like that. And just made this little black dot. I just thought it would look better. Watch when I put it on the card. Don't you think it's cool? What do you guys think? I just think that the little black dot in the center kind of, I don't know, made it. Just did something different for it. I just think that they, it brings in, ties in the, the um, black ink. 
So that is done. I did it, like I said, with my black, my dark, black, dark basic black marker. Because I thought of it, because, you know, we use these alcohol blends. That's a... Um, um, we use these blends to color some of our embellishments, so I thought that was a good idea to try it there, and it worked, and I think it's just, I mean, it's not real, real noticeable, but just subtle enough. So I'm going to put one up there, press it hard because I do not want these to come off later, and I'll put one here, and the last one down here. Look at that. I mean, I did it in different areas on my first card. But isn't that cool? Do you like... Oh, I got a... I think I got a thumbs up. I looked over and I saw something blue fly by the screen. But isn't that a cool little... Um, I don't know. I just think... You could, if you wanted to, put these on the inside of the flowers. Originally, that's what I thought I was going to do. But um, th we don't have a blue because I thought I could do... Um, the purple would be cute in there. But they kind of get lost. This I could have done there. But, you know, we don't have the other colors, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to put them splattered around. Um, and But I once I added that, like I said, I did it after I had my card together, and I said, oh, it needs something, so I just did the center. I think it does. Uh, let me see if I can go higher. I forgot I was zoomed in. You probably, oops, I'm trying to see one. Can you see that one? I'm trying to see if you can see it. But... Anyway, I'm going to zoom out now because I don't want to forget about that. I like your card better than the catalog. Oh, thank you, Cindy. I I just think that it's it's very similar to the catalog, but all I did was, I think, add those flowers. So I'm going to bring in the catalog again and show you mine. It's very similar. Um, I used the same colors as they did. Mine, obviously, you can see it's bigger. Now let me pull out, where's our other card that we just did? Where did I put it? Oh, I found it. All right, so this is the other card that we did that is similar to that one, right? Sorry, I have all my these tabs in my book of things I want to buy. All right, so this is the first one. I used the other flower. I used the same flower to stamp. It just It just needed something. I didn't like the plain white. They left it plain white. I just think that um, it needed something around the edge. Maybe it's too busy. I don't know. And I I sealed this bottom piece down. I don't know what they did. And then I did that. So those are the two cards that I cased from the book. And like I said, um, I am I, my my card class to go is using this stamp set and the dies. And you only have. Four days, today and the next three days, till the 31st, to order from me, spend $35, and you can get a kit of, a kit to make these eight cards. These are my cards. All right, these are the cards that you'll get a kit for, and you'll get to make two each of those four designs. And, oh, you think this card's bolder, Cindy? I think it is, but it might just be because the catalog is um, the way it's printed. But so these are the card. This is the card kit to go class. Um, just place a thirty-five dollar order with me using my host code on DonnaSingleton.StampingUp.net, and you'll get these four a kit to make these four cards. You'll have to um, if you don't buy the dies, you'll have to fussy cut these three flowers and this flower out, or you could. This would fit right on this scallop piece, but I'm going to give you all these scallop pieces, all the die cuts, all the ribbon, all the twine. Um, if your order $50 or more, you will get, I believe what I just said is I'm going to give, um, I think I have enough, because I already, this, this special has been going on since the 18th. I believe you'll get a package of these Genial Gems. If it's not the Genial Gems, it may be the black dots, because you'll use those too. I haven't decided yet, but I think it's going to be these. All right, because those I used on two different cards. See, we use the splatter on this one too. So that's the card class to go. Um, these are the cards we made today. Oh, I did say that I was going to also give you, 
in case you don't buy these this um, color and contour dies I'm gonna give everybody one of these in the card kit and you can just play around with this masking technique to make um, your own stripe of blended colors all right so that's all for today I went a little longer than normal but that's okay I wanted to make sure I shared all this with you so thank you so much for watching if you're watching this on Facebook go ahead and give me a like and I know a couple of you already shared I really appreciate that if you're watching the, the replay on YouTube which I will be uploading that later today or first thing in the morning if you're watching it there on YouTube pl please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to sign up for my email list at, and um, you can go to my blog donnascreativespace.com and there's a right up in the heading you can click on it and send me your email address okay folks that's all I have for today I hope you enjoyed these cards and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny little speck of adhesive just to keep this one closed just for a second so that I can there just like that just so that I can take a picture of it all right folks take care thanks for watching I'll see you next time